Ironically, next to um, sci-fi films or comic book films, I, I think it, the only films that invite more scrutiny are films about the Bible, about these stories that sure. we well, hold dear big for. Stories. They're huge stories, obviously. Yeah. So does, does having been through that experience in your own life in making films that have been subject to close scrutiny yeah. kind of help you along in this process and knowing I can handle it, I know how to Totally, work. totally. I mean, I don't, I mean, you get your head knocked off occasionally and you, the, what you learn very quickly is, and with the greatest respect, I never read press, ever. Once I got slaughtered after Blade Runner <laughs> by Pauline Kael, three pages of slaughter, I was so offended, I would never read any more press. You have to know what you've done. The key thing is you can be the only person who is your own critic. Yeah. That, that's why I think a great actor is also the virtuoso of what the instrument he's playing, which is himself. Sure. So at the end of it, I'm always respectful of the actor saying, I got it, you want to go again? Because if he says, no, I want one more, fine, let's go again. Does, does that kind of tunnel mentality still maintain to this day in, in respect to, like for instance, something like Prometheus, which is a huge commercial hit, and now you're going back to that storyline. Ironically, the people that were most critical were like the diehard fanboys. There were some that like, it wasn't what was in their head, I guess, for whatever reason. Yeah, but you've got to ignore that. You can't. I don't make films for other people. I make films for me. Yeah. And so far, it's pretty good because I'm still here after 35 years. <laughs> so yeah, there's a good expression, you can bleep this, you want to so say you very much. <laughs> An MTV, they won't bleep it. Don't bleep it. <laughs> We're keeping it no in. No balls. <laughs> <laughs> Can you t tell me anything about the storyline for the next one? Is this still going to be Shaw and David's story in the next Prometheus oh, story? Oh, you have to. You can't have a person go off into the, the into the, 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 the what have you called, the galaxy, and have a person who's still got his head off. Once that head goes back on, he's really dangerous. But he's also very seductive. So maybe he'll persuade her to help him put the head back. <laughs> the uh, the other one I have to ask you, you mentioned it earlier with respect to Pauline Kael way back when, is uh, everybody's obviously very excited. It's written about and ready Runner. to go. So what's the debate? You're debating whether you're going to direct or not from what I hear, yes? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, the right answer for now, yeah. Okay. Uh, safe to say that Harrison's not going to be doing voiceover Absolutely. for this one. Voiceover, though, I would say. No, 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 no. <laughs> Harrison, um, Harrison and I really get on rather well. And so I, I sent him this, and he said, wow, we said this is the best thing I've ever read. So it's very relevant to what happened the first one. So I'm not just doing a sequel with lots of action and see how far we can go with the special effects, because you can't really. Yeah. Blade Runner, we kind of landed on a somehow very credible future. And it's very difficult to change that because it's been so influential with everything else. Exactly. What well, you're saying, the bar's so high in terms of design. I mean, obviously that one did influence decades of yeah, filmmaking. Yeah, you can over-design the hell out of everything. So eventually you're just watching design. Right. And I think the key is, and I'm a designer, very much a designer, keep the design in its place. Yeah. You know, otherwise it just kills the credibility of what you're watching. An explosion which is too big, and you go, how do you survive that? You're right out of the movie.